It is a nationwide manhunt, and actually in less than 24 hours, that's how quickly things turned around, two B.C. teens went from missing persons to being wanted as suspected killers. Hey you, and well, my name is Mike, and in this video, we're going back to Canada again. Seriously, what is going on up there? I thought they were supposed to be nice. Yes, this is a story that is still developing, so let's get caught up on the terrifying events that have occurred over the past week or so. Also, special thank you at the end, because you guys are amazing, but uh, for now, let's just stay on track. Canada? Deaths? Let's go. This story begins as recently as July 15th, 2019, when officers from the Northern Rockies Royal Canadian Mounted Police discovered the bodies of China Deese and her boyfriend Lucas Fowler along Highway 97 just outside Liard Hot Springs in British Columbia, Canada. 24-year-old China Deese was from North Carolina, while her boyfriend 23-year-old Lucas Fowler was from Australia. They were traveling the world and planned on visiting a series of national parks in Canada when, well, what happened, happened. This is footage that was taken at a gas station about two days prior to their bodies being found. They were found shot to death. A blue 1986 Chevrolet van was found abandoned at the scene believed to be the van they were traveling in. In fact, several people reported seeing them along the highway with their broken down van shortly before their deaths. One witness, a road worker, said that she saw the couple talking with a bearded man who looked frustrated as they stood next to their van the night before their bodies were found. A sketch was then released to the public of the person the road worker saw. If you just get a bad feeling, and that's what I had, you just don't stop. You had a bad feeling. I did, yeah. Then, less than one week later, two young men went missing in Canada not that far away. 19-year-old Cam McLeod and 18-year-old Briar Schmigelski from Vancouver Island. The truck they were traveling in was found in flames on Highway 37 near Dease Lake in British Columbia, about 470 kilometers, that's 292 miles, away from where China and Lucas were found. The lifelong friends were former employees at a local Walmart. An unidentified body believed to be that of a man in his 50s or 60s was found burned not far from the teenager's van. Just there today, in fact, the police actually identified the third body. It was that of Leonard Dyke. Now these cases, they're pretty far away, even though they're in the same province, from the infamous Highway of Tears. Canada is f***ing huge. I covered the Highway of Tears before, and it's where since the 70s, it's believed that up to 40 women have either died or disappeared along that one stretch of road. It's pretty terrifying, and that uh, story was actually one of the, personally one of the hardest ones I had to cover. Uh, but this is not the same place, it's just in the same province. A lot of people are getting that mixed up. This case we're talking about today was not along the Highway of Tears. But still, Canada, what are you up to? So, the police had three bodies on their hands and two missing people. All within, um, you know, small by Canada standards, uh, geographic location. Um, but then, there's a development. Cam and Briar are no longer considered missing. The RCMP are now considering Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski as suspects in the Dees Lake suspicious death and the double homicide of Lucas Fowler and China Dees. Both Cam and Briar were originally declared missing after the discovery of their burning truck but police say they were last seen driving a different vehicle in northern Saskatchewan, a grey Toyota RAV4, and that anyone who spots them should not approach, 
but rather call 911 immediately. They were seen a day after the third body and their burnt out truck were found in Jade City. Police believe the cases are linked. Cam and Briar are wanted as suspects in both the double murder and the death of the third man. The two young men had been travelling through BC on their way to Whitehorse in Yukon where they planned to look for work. Obviously they found a very different type of work. They are believed to be armed and dangerous. This is the most recent photo of them taken in Saskatchewan. They are believed to be in the Gillam area, a town located in northern Manitoba on the Nelson River. We gotta remember this is an extremely remote part of Canada, very limited cell service and not much of a police presence as it's simply too big. Cam's father Keith described his son as a kind, considerate, caring young man who was always concerned about other people's feelings. Why he would do what the police suspect him and his friend of doing remains unknown. The Manitoba RCMP continues to work with BC RCMP and share information in relation to locating Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski, the two suspects connected to investigations in Northern British Columbia. Based on this information, we have sent a number of resources to the Gillam area. There will be a heavier police presence in the community. Uh, right now, um, like our investigation is focused on, on locating these individuals for, for our safety, for the public safety, so we're just you know, working on it and trying to get as much information to you that we can. All right, thank you, that'll be it. Now the case is still developing, so we don't know the full story yet, depending on when you're watching this video. Why would they do this? They seemed like normal guys back in their hometown, according to people who knew them. Their motive for killing three people remains unknown unless to rob them. We only know the third body's name, uh, Leonard Dyke, uh, but we don't really know anything else about him, if he had any connection to them. And finally, uh, was it really them? Because get this, there is another person the police are aware of and possibly looking into. They're pretty sure it's those two boys, but listen to this. Derek Wisnand is a Texas man who crossed the border into Canada sometime around June 24th. He is wanted for murder in Texas, and he may have a gun and is considered dangerous. Now he isn't really considered a suspect in this case, although obviously the police want his ass, but as I said this is still a very new and developing story so it's unlikely he is connected but he is still a killer on the run in Canada. Even most recently, Briar Schmigelski's father, Alan, said his son had a troubled upbringing and was now on a suicide mission. Basically, he's going to be dead today or tomorrow. I, I know that. I would say... Rest in peace, Briar. I love you. I'm so sorry all this had to happen and he said he expected his son to die in a confrontation with police. Kind of goes against what other people were saying about them in their hometown, that they were just nice young men. Um, that's a really weird thing to say about your son, that he's on a suicide mission. What? Um, actually scratch that. It seems like they have a love of some pretty far right stuff, 1940s style, and uh, had quite the collection of memorabilia. Briar would tell his friends he would decapitate them and would say, what if this was real? Can you imagine if this was real when playing video games? Police are now converging on the area where the pair were last seen, with armed police, helicopters and tracker dogs. There have been two confirmed sightings of them out there. Apparently Cam and Briar consider themselves survivalists, so it's likely they're camped out in the woods. Though this is the tourist season, so that area will probably be swamped soon. And it's very hot. Now there are also unconfirmed reports. The teens are traveling in a car with Manitoba number plates, stolen from a Gillum man, and speculation they may have even been involved in a suspected abduction and carjacking further south. So they may have escaped the area. Police are continuing to search the Gillum area, however and locals are sleeping with their guns. It's nerve-wracking, like, 
I'm scared for my grandchildren and uh, my friends and family that live here. Who knows how this one will end. Definitely one to keep an eye on, folks. And finally, thank you so, so much for everything. Our little community we got going here, it's over 100,000 people strong, which is actually insane to me. I can't believe it. I need to put the captain's hat on to celebrate, you know, it's crazy. I never thought it would reach this size, certainly not in this amount of time. Um, it'll be two years of that chapter in September. Um, and I can't thank you enough for liking, watching, subscribing, commenting, and just your general support has been insane. Thank you so much. I never thought this many people would um, watch me talk about stuff, so uh, thanks for doing it, and keep it up if you like. I hope you do. So all I can say is thank you from the bottom of my heart, and yeah, I will see you as always real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves, thank you again, my gout.